What's good? Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Buy for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Let's get to it. And we know Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak has always been outspoken on his thoughts about the big fruit company. And in a recent interview with CNN, he said Apple could have had a much bigger share of the smartphone market if it had a larger screen iPhone for the past three years. It could have competed better with Samsung. And you know what? The numbers don't lie. The latest IDC report shows Samsung with a commanding 24% market share worldwide, with Apple coming in second at 12%. And new data collected by consumer intelligence research partners found that fewer iPhone buyers came from Google's Android platform in 2014 at only 12%, compared to 23% in 2013, and the vast majority of people buying the iPhone were already iPhone owners. That tells us most people are set on their platform of choice and the idea that the larger screen iPhones would shift a large amount of Android users back to Apple doesn't seem to be the case at all. Now in news you don't want to hear, cybersecurity firm FireEye says hackers have found a way to break into Apple mobile devices using web pages, text messages, and emails to trick users into downloading fake apps that can end up leaking their information back to the hackers. FireEye says this vulnerability affects all users using iOS 7 and later, whether it's a jailbroken phone or not. Now, this comes after security firm Palo Alto Networks revealed an attack last week called Wire Lurker that's based on the same vulnerability, where unapproved apps downloaded onto a Mac this time could infect iPhones once they are plugged into that Mac. Now, Apple says they are aware of the problem and working on a fix, so just be careful with what you're doing, Apple Biters, and fix this, Cupertino. But until then, you're getting a bad apple. Oh! But, you know, I will change that once you fix it. All right, Beats announced their first new product under Apple ownership with the Solo 2 wireless headphones. These have obviously been in the works before the acquisition. The headphones will stream music from a device over Bluetooth and can be used up to 30 feet away. They'll launch in the U.S. later this month for $299.95. And Apple better be paying attention after YouTube finally launched their own music streaming service called YouTube Music Key for $9.99 a month. It's an ad-free music service that can be played in the background with offline music playlists as well. And incorporating the actual music videos into this service also really makes it unique since YouTube has become the place to go for that. Now we're also still waiting to see what Apple does with the Beats music service with rumors pointing to a revamped subscription service that will possibly charge only $5 a month. All right, in iPad news, a recent report from Mako Takara is still targeting early 2015 for the rumored iPad Pro that they claim will use a 12.2 inch screen instead of the rumored 12.9. It will be as thick as the current iPhone with two additional speakers for possible stereo sound instead of that a weak sauce that uh, comes from the bottom or one side. Also, an analysis of the current custom A8X chip inside the iPad Air 2 reveals that it's much more powerful than previously thought with the chip's unique eight cluster design according to Nantech. The performance improvements are so disproportionate to the current hardware and the speculation is that there will be upcoming software enhancements that will truly take advantage of it like maybe split screen multitasking on a, something like a big screen iPad. Hmm. Okay, let's check out the hot new product of the week. You've seen tripods and stands for your iPhone, but you have to check out this brand new one from the team at Canoe. This is the Stance, it's $29.95. It's a compact tripod that fits in your pocket. You can unfold it and you get this strong sturdy base so you can use it for FaceTime or you can fold it up and put your phone on your side to watch movies or even record some sick time-lapse movies like this one in Hawaii. <laughs> Wow, it's like you're there. Okay, now its ball and pivot joint is rock solid. It fits directly into the lightning port and look at this edge, see this? It's also a bottle opener. That's right, it will have girls asking you things like. Hey Ryan. Yeah, what's up Elisa? Is that a tripod in your pocket? <laughs> Why yes, yes it is. And it also pops bottles. Awesome. Uh, is that orange creamsicle? No, 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 no. Pilsner. So we're giving away three of these bad boys to you, the apple biters. All you have to do is tell us what's the picture we showed you when I gave you a hug in last week's show, and uh, how did it make you feel, honestly? 
Email me at theapplebyte at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong, and I'll pick three winners and announce them on next week's show. All right, that's going to do it for this week. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you all next time for another bite of the apple.